So today we'll be learning how to use Expo along with Firebase to send push notifications to our React Native app. To send push notifications, you need to have three things. A client interface, which is our app. A server, where we can store the user's data in our database and decide which user to send the push notification to. And thirdly, we need to have another server, which helps us send the push notifications. So for the server, we're going to be using the Firebase real-time database along with Cloud Functions. The database is where we're going to be storing the user's token and the cloud function is where we're going to be deciding who to send the notification to. And for sending the push notifications, we're going to be using Expo's own server to send the notification. That's the benefit of using Expo, that it allows us to use its server to send notifications without having to spin up your own server. So we're going to be building upon our swipeable list project that we had created in the last video. The link for it is in the description. So here I have the project in front of me. The only change that I've made is I've changed the name of the placeholder from add name to add note, which is going to make this app look like a note taking app in which users add notes and everyone else who's logged into this app will get push notifications for a new note. So let's first import the permissions and notifications from Expo. Come here to the top. Next, let's create a method which will help us register the user's token in our Firebase database. So let's call that method register for push notifications async. So basically the aim of creating this function is to show the user a pop-up to allow for push notifications. If the user allows it, store the token in the user's database so that we can retrieve it later. Coming to the Expo docs, this is done for us. I'll just copy this code and walk you through it. So the first thing it does is, it uses permissions to check what the current status of the permissions is. If the existing status is not granted, it'll show a pop-up to the user on iOS devices to allow for the notifications. In case of Android devices, these permissions are set up during the app install and may not work during testing with Expo. Next, if the user denies the permission for push notifications, the function will just end. If the user allows the permission for the push notifications, it will get the token from the Expo server and store it into a constant called token. Then all we need to do is we need to post the token to our backend server from where we can retrieve it to send push notifications. For that, we'll use Firebase. So normally it'd be nice to have a login flow created for us in which the user enters an email or password and logs in and then comes to the screen where the user will be adding the notes. For now, I've already created two users in our Firebase authentication system and saved their details in our Firebase database. You can learn how to create this authentication system in one of my previous videos, which the link for which is available in the description. So once the user allows the application to send push notifications, we'll save the Expo token here under the user's UID. So it'd be nice to have a login flow in which we can log the user in and then go to the push notification screen. But here we'll just log the user in using code. So coming here to the top, inside our component in mount, we'll say firebase.auth.signin with email and password. And we'll pass in the email and password of the user. This is the user that I've created. And then we'll say dot then. We'll get the user back from the database. And then we'll call register for push notifications async. We'll also pass in the user to this method. And here in this method, we'll update it to take a parameter called user so that the current user is passed. Coming here below now, what we need to do is we need to update the user's data to store the Expo token in it. So we'll create a variable called updates. So we'll say var updates, an empty object, and then we'll say updates, point to the node that we want to update the token at, which is Expo token, and set the token there. Next, we'll call firebase.database dot ref go into the node of users dot child and use the user parameter that we had passed to extract the uid of the user 
and there update the updates. So this will update the expo token in the user's database when the user logs in. But for this, we'll have to run this app on an actual device. And I can see there are some typos here. This should be updates and this should be users and this should be UID. So now that we have all that ready, we can test this out on the phone and see if it works. So here we have the phone in front of us. Let's test the app out. Now let's scan the QR code. And there we see we get an alert which says Expo would like to send notifications. We we'll click on allow. And there we have the app in front of us. So our database should have been updated now. So let's cross check that. There we can see the Expo token has been added to the particular user. Now the last thing that we need to do is we need to set up our cloud function to be able to detect when a new note is added. And when the note is added, it will send a push notification to the users that have subscribed to the push notifications. Open up the terminal. In our project folder, we'll run Firebase init. After that, we'll come down here to functions and press spacebar to select it. Select JavaScript as a type of language. And do you want to install the dependencies will be yes. Once the installation is complete, if we come here, we'll see we have a functions folder created for us. And inside that, we have an index.js. There's one more dependency that we'll install before we start writing our function. This dependency will be installed inside the functions folder. It's called node fetch. It basically helps us make HTTP requests. So inside our terminal, we'll go into the functions folder and there we'll run npm install node fetch. Now that that's also installed, we can start writing a function. We'll write var fetch is equal to require and we'll require the node fetch module that we just installed. We'll get rid of this commented code here. Then we'll say constant admin is equal to require Firebase admin. This dependency was installed automatically along with Firebase Cloud Functions. And then we'll initialize the app. So our aim is to create a function that will detect when an entry is made into the contacts node if our database, and then send a notification to all the users that, are, that have subscribed to the push notifications, telling them that a new node was added. So the method that we'll be creating will be called send push notification. And we'll call functions dot database dot ref contacts ID check for a on create event and get the event back. Basically, this checks when an entry is made under the contacts node, run this function. So what we'll do is, using the event, we get the root of the database by saying event.data.ref.root and we'll just create an empty array here. This array will store all the push notifications that we create. Next, we'll say root.child users dot once value to get all our users from our database that way we'll get the snapshot from the database we'll loop over the snapshot and get a child snapshot from it that is once we've got the users, we loop over them and each individual user will be a child snapshot. Then we'll extract the token from them. So it'll be child snapshot dot val dot expo token. Trying to extract the expo token from here. Next, we'll check if the token exists. And if it does, we create the notification. So we'll say messages dot push. to and we pass in the export token 
we want to send the notification to this particular expo token and we'll put in a body saying new note added but there's an issue with this code here since this is an asynchronous request we are unsure of when this completes we need to get this array and then send the push notification to it so the best way to do that would be to use promises so here at the top we'll return the main promise by putting a return here and inside here what we'll do is we'll say return promise dot all with the messages so we get another dot then here because we're returning a promise and then work on the messages so we'll say fetch using the node fetch that we had installed then here we need to copy in the expo url that the expo documentation provides us so if we come into the documentation and go into the push notification section we can copy out this url from here and paste it in here next we need to set up some properties here the first one will be method which will be of type post headers we have to pass in accept which will be of type application.json and content type which will also be application.json slash json and lastly we need to put in the body of the push notification which will have to be in text form but here on top we had created a json object so we need to convert that into string before we send it out so we'll say json.stringify and pass in the messages that's all we need to do to set up our function we just need to upload this function to our firebase console before we can test this out so open up the terminal go into your project folder and run firebase deploy so there a function has been deployed to our server and now is the moment of truth trying to test out our push notification just a small note i'd like to make over here is that firebase does not allow you to use cloud functions with an external api in the free plan you must sign up for either a fixed plan or the blaze plan which is a pay as you go plan i've noticed that even if you take the blaze plan for testing purposes you won't be charged anything so it's worth giving it a try so there I have my phone here and my Firebase console open up. What we'll do is we'll add a new note under the contacts node. So I'll say ID of one and give it a name of upload video. Because I really need to upload this video now. And if we click on add, we should get the notification. So that's added to our database and bam we get the push notification on our phone.